it's completely fine if you are totally new to the programming world and maybe you don't know android at all it's completely fine i am going to teach you everything you need to do in order to learn android application development hello everyone my name is sachin rajput and i work in android application development from last seven years and i would like to welcome you to this tour of the latest version of android studio software developers who want to build android applications we need android studio and android studio is the official google id id means it's a tool where we can write code we can debug our code and we can make beautiful applications so first thing first we need android studio to download it we just need to search android studio we just need to click here it will take us to this website developers.android.com this page has all the details about android studio all right so if we scroll down we can see all the latest features coming up and we can also see the system requirements android studio is available for all the operating system mac os windows and others so in general at least 8 gb ram is needed for android studio we need to click on this button and then we need to go down and we need to accept this terms and condition and based on our laptop operating system this will suggest us the android studio version and as i am using mac with apple chip i will click on this and now we can see android studio is getting downloaded once the downloading is completed then we will get one dmg file or if you are using window then you will get one dot exe file we just need to double click on this and then we need to just drag and drop this to applications and now it's copying inside our application and then inside our applications we will see this android studio we just need to click on this and here it is our android studio is installed so after installation when we click on this android studio icon first time so it will take us to one setup process so basically here it is saying no android sdk found so don't worry i will tell you what android sdk is so before we go into the details what we need to do to complete this installation process we just need to click on this next button and then it is telling us that sdk will be installed on this location okay so we just need to click on this next button then again we need to click on this next button and here it is showing us some terms and condition in order to use android sdk and all so we just click here accept and then we need to click on this finish so once our sdk download is complete we will see this welcome screen of android studio let me show you the things android studio downloaded for us in the location we were seeing in the previous window right so we can just open terminal let me just zoom it little bit and then i have copied that location so we can just go to this location where our sdk is downloaded okay so inside our sdk location these things have been downloaded by our android studio we will just go through all of these things one by one one very important thing inside this sdk folder is this platform tools this platform tools has adv this adv stands for android debug bridge now the question will come to your mind is why we need adv right so the simplest answer is adv allow us to communicate to a physical android device now why we need to communicate to a phone because whatever the application we are going to develop we need to test those application and in order to test our application we need to install our android applications on any physical android device and to install our app on a phone we need adv we will learn more about adv and all of these things later on now let's get back to our android studio okay so finally we are on the welcome screen of our android studio our studio is installed then our sdk files has been installed so first of all our android studio name is electric l this is the version for our android studio which we are using right now let me show you all the options we have in our android studio welcome screen so here we have one tiny setting symbol if we click on this we have one drop down there is one about option so if we click on this we will get to know the details of our android studio okay so as of now we just downloaded our android studio so this is the latest one so if we will click on this check for updates there will be no update so it is not showing any dialog for updating now we have these three major functions here 
we can either click on this and create a new project we can open any pre-existing project which we already created and then we can directly get some project from github as well so let me show you one by one to create a new android application project we just need to click on this new project now once we click we will see multiple options we are seeing here templates phone and tablet VR OS if we want to make application for watches we need to select this we can make applications for Android TV as well and for some automobiles as well we will cover all of these things later but for now let's start with phone and tablet applications okay so we have multiple options inside this we can either select no activity basic activity and all of these things so don't worry about all of these things we can just select for now one empty activity okay this one and then we can press next so this is our application name so we can just give a name of hello world okay hello world app and then this is the package name so you can give anything inside the package name I am just giving here com dot native mobile widths our YouTube channel name and then our application name okay and then this is the location we are going to use you can change this project location basically if you want to store your project at any other location so you can just click here and then you can create any new folder and so on now we have the option to select the language which we are going to use to code our android application so there are two options basically either we can use java or kotlin so we are going to use Kotlin inside our Android application development. Then we have this minimum SDK option. So by default Android 7 is selected by Android Studio. And you can see that it is showing your app will run on 94% of devices. So if we are selecting Android 7 as minimum SDK, our app will be compatible with around 94% of devices. We can change this as well. If we select some latest version Android 12 maybe, then only 24% of Android devices has Android 12 okay so let's get back and let's select this Android 7 so our app will be compatible for more number of devices right and then just click on this finish now Android Studio is creating our first project okay so this project is getting created so in Android Studio Gradle plays a very important role and what Gradle actually is we will cover this in detail so you can understand gradle like this for now so a gradle is kind of a mechanic which you need in order to run your car or bike perfectly right so for example you take your bikes to your mechanics right like just do a routine checkup and just see if everything is working fine your dependencies are fine like fuel is working fine and so on Similarly, Gradle checks for your Android project if everything is fine and all the dependencies are added correctly and then your project will run perfectly. Okay, so finally our project is created and Android Studio has downloaded all the required components and our project is ready. Now we are ready to work with our Android project. In Android Studio, all the project files we can find in this project window now in order to deal with this project window we have couple of option either we can click here to hide this like this and then again if you want to see that window we can just click here again or we can click here and hide this window and then again we can click here and this window will appear suppose you clicked here and then your project window will hide now you can also go here and click on this view button and then you can click on this tool windows you can click on this project okay and then your project window will appear from here as well this project window has different different view option if we click on this we have this project android packages project files and multiple other options by default the project window comes up with android view option okay android view is the default selection in our project window and this android view only shows us the files which we are going to use more commonly okay and it will hide some files which we don't commonly use now let me close these files and let's explore our project structure okay so right now we are in our project window and we are in android view which comes by default and inside this our project structure is like this so inside our f folder this is the main folder for our application and this is basically a module in every project at least one module is there and by default there will be one app module okay 
this is the main application module which represents to our application okay the application we are working in right now inside our application folder we have one folder manifest okay if we explore this we have one file android manifest in journal in one project one manifest file will be there at least one manifest file will be there for sure and this manifest file this basically describe the nature of our application and all of its component so for example let's say our application has five screen okay so all of those five screen we will define here okay inside our application tag this is basically representing to our project our application and inside this all of the components we are going to use in our application we will define here and suppose our android application is going to use some kind of internet okay maybe to download some data from server or maybe to push some data which we are going to take from user into our server okay and we need internet for all those kind of things right so we will be needing some specific permissions so in order to use the internet permission we are going to say to our android operating system that hey our application is going to use internet permission okay and how we will say to os we will define some permissions also here okay all the permissions we will define here for now let's delete this now next is this java folder so all of the code which we are going to write in our application in our android application is going to be in this java folder okay and we can write our code either in java or kotlin so all of those files will be inside this folder okay let's click here we can also resize this project window like this we can scroll this side or this side now java folder has three subfolders and all of these subfolders are basically kind of the package name which we gave while we created our project right and this first folder is the main folder where we will write our code related to our application okay here we will write all of the logic which we are going to use in our application we can notice in this next folder in bracket there is something written android test so if we are going to write any ui test for our application then all of those tests we are going to write in this folder okay the third one this is having in bracket test so basically we are also going to write some unit test cases right all of those unit test cases we need to write in this folder so this folder is going to be our key folder where we are going to start writing our code inside this we have one file main activity if we click on this we will see one tiny kotlin symbol over here that means this is a kotlin file and every kotlin file ends with dot kt extension okay this entire code is written in kotlin and for sure we are going to write a lot of code going forward in this course for now let me show you something let me minimize this package here okay now in android studio there is one very important thing if we want to find this file where this file is located inside our project window we can just click on this symbol here and it will show us the exact path where this file is stored in which folder this file is present okay now this button will expand all of these folders if you click here it will open all of the folders okay now for example let's say you was working on different different files and multiple folders are open like this in our project window and if you want to close all of this open folder here inside our project window so you can just click here and it will close all the open folders like this okay now let's get back to our project structure now let's start with this resource folder this resource folder is also a very important folder and it contains all the known code related files like it contains all the images all the xml layout where we will create some design ui designs and all the string resources some animations ui animations all of those files will be here in resource folder okay now let's open this resource folder so inside this we have these different different folders this drivel folder will contain all the different type of images we are going to use in the development of our application okay and if we want to use any image inside our application screen so first of all we need to add that image inside our drivel folder now the next is this layout folder this layout folder will contain all the xml layout files 
which will basically define the user interface of our application. So the UI which we are going to have in our application, we will design all of those UI here inside the layout folder. Okay. Next folder is MIPMAP. This folder contains the launcher XML files, basically your launcher PNG files to define the application icon. So the launcher icon we are going to use for our application, we are going to add here. For now, the default Android icon is used as the launcher icon. This is basically added by Android Studio itself when we created our project. So the launcher icon of our application we are going to place here because we have different different dimensions of Android phone. So in order to support all of those dimensions, we have different different dimensions and densities for our app icon. This is for HDPI, then this is for XHDPI and then for higher resolution as well we have the icon. If you click here, we can see this is the lower dimension icon and then we have for higher dimension icon as well. Okay. Now let's close this MIPMAP folder. Okay. We have this values folder and inside this we have different different type of colors. We have defined all the colors in this colors.xml file and we have one strings file as well and inside this we are going to define all the string we are going to use in our application. For example, we have right now app name. This is the same name which we gave while we was creating the project. Now let me close this resource folder. Then we have the Gradle scripts and here we have all the files related to Gradle. So you can notice there are two files will.gradle project level and then will.gradle module app level. Okay. So inside this module app level we are going to define all the dependencies we are going to use. We will learn about these dependencies later in this course. For now, let me close this and let's learn about how we can customize our Android Studio based on our choices. Right now, in our Android Studio, everything is in dark. If we open any coding file as well, everything is in dark, okay? But we can customize our Android Studio. To customize our Android Studio, we need to go to settings or preferences. If we are using Windows, then we need to go for setting option. And if you are using Mac, then we just need to click here. On the top, we have this Android Studio. When we click here, we will see this preferences option. Similarly, in Windows, we will see settings option. And then we need to click here. Now we have this preferences or settings dialog. In this, we have different different options here. Okay. The first option is appearance and behavior. We just need to click here and we need to choose this appearance and now we have the theme option. So right now the dark theme is applied. We just need to click on this drop down and then we can choose this light theme and we can just apply it okay and now everything is in white if you open any file everything is in white right now and inside theme we have one more option high contrast so i will tell you to avoid this but let me show you how it looks like if we click here our android studio will look like this okay it looks very sky fi kind of thing right if we open any file right now it will look like this so right now everything is in high contrast okay let me close these files and let's go back again to preferences and let's select the dark theme itself with these themes we can also choose the custom font so what this custom font will do this will change the style of the dialogues and these headings like we have this main activity dot kt file name right some alert in the project window like we have this folder names all of these things will change with the help of custom font so let's select this we can choose any of these font let's select this for now and then we need to click on this apply okay so we can see that all of these alerts some headings and this file name everything is updated right let's go back and select to the default apple system ui font okay and let's click on this apply and select this okay if we want to update the size of these headings maybe this file name and these folders name in the project window we can just do this we need to go to the preference and in window we need to go for settings and then we need to just increase this size here like this we need to click on apply and we can notice all of these alerts 
maybe this heading or this dialogue everything is increased right to roll back to previous size we just need to select that size and click on apply okay in system settings we have multiple options like updates so if we click on this and we have this button here check for updates so if we want to check is there any update available for our android studio so we can just click on this it will show us the update available so if you want to install this update we just need to click on this update and restart or maybe we can ignore this update but for now let me just close this then we have memory settings so it's like how much memory our android studio can use in our system okay so our laptop our system has assigned 2048 MB for our Android Studio but I must tell you Android Studio is a very powerful ID it does a lot of things in the background while we focus on our application development so we can assign some more memory for our Android Studio and to do that we just need to click on this drop down we need to click on this 4096 MB and then we just need to click on this apply button now that we have assigned some extra memory for our android studio so if we want to allow our android studio to relaunch and take benefit of that entire memory we need to relaunch it okay so we can click on this yes and it will restart our android studio all right now we are ready to create virtual devices you must be thinking why we need a virtual device in order to test our applications we need to install these applications either on a physical device or a virtual device our android studio is very smart and it has the capability to create different different kind of virtual devices basically virtual phones in which we can install our applications and test to create a virtual device in our android studio we need to come here and right now as we don't have any device it is showing us no devices okay if we click on this drop down we have this device manager okay we also has the same device manager button here either we can click on this drop down or we can click on this device manager button here okay and this window will open this is basically device manager window device manager window has two tab virtual and physical if we connect any physical device in our system that device will appear here here. I will show you how we can connect and how we can use physical devices later on but for now let's focus on virtual device okay in virtual section it is showing us one message as well no virtual devices added let's create our first virtual device in our Android studio to create a virtual device either we can click on this button or we can click on this text as well create virtual device this prompt will open we can resize to see the details more clearly like this this virtual device configuration is similar to the configuration you all do when you purchase any laptop so you think right like how many gb of ram i need maybe i need this operating system or that one you focus on all of the configuration of your system this is exactly similar for your virtual device here we are going to configure our virtual phone we have multiple options. we can choose which phone we want so we have different different templates like we have pixel xl pixel x pro and these other phones as well we can choose any of these devices for now let's select pixel xl okay so it is showing us the size okay 5.5 inches and it is showing us the respective resolution as well okay and then it is showing us the density as well if we choose any other device it has some different width and height and then we can click on this next button in this window we need to choose which android os version we are going to install inside our virtual device okay so if you are not familiar let me tell you one very fascinating story till android 10 all of the android version used to have some name based on any particular suite so you can notice that as i was telling all of these android names used to be based on some desserts okay this lollipop you can see this symbol as well if you click on this marshmallow there is marshmallow symbol then in api 24 and 25 this nougat symbol is there then we used to be having oreo 26 and 27 oreo and you can see the oreo symbol as well okay then there was android pie we don't have any more desserts name after android 10 so we are going to choose this api 32 
okay you can choose any other api as well so if you want to choose this we can click on this download button and it will start downloading the version okay but this entire different api will have a load of things to download so we can cancel this for now and we can choose the downloaded one android 32 and then we can click on this next in this window we can give a name so right now it is showing us the name okay pixel excel and then we have choose api 32 to install inside our device we can customize the name as well we can give our name sachin's pixel excel api 32 okay we can choose the startup orientation as well this means whenever phone will start so by default it should be in portrait mode or in landscape mode okay so we'll choose portrait okay so our adv name cannot have this post office symbol we can just remove this and we can click on this finish now our first virtual device is created let me just resize this window it is showing us the device name such as pixel excel and we have chose the api 32 to install in this device okay we can also see that this device is taking 513 mb on our disk this means this is the memory occupied by our virtual device in our system now we created our virtual device let's say we want to code so we can hide this window device manager by clicking here okay and then we can do the coding work if we want to see the devices again either we can click here device manager okay or we can click on this device manager then our device manager window will appear we can resize this like this okay to start our virtual device we can click on this button this will launch our avd avd stands for android virtual device okay so we can click on this and let's minimize this for now and this emulator window is showing us our phone so our phone is starting you can see how beautiful this animation looks like okay our pixel phone is starting our phone is ready let me resize this emulator window this looks like a real phone but it only exists virtually inside our android studio we can interact with this like this it has several apps it has youtube youtube music and all of these basic apps which comes from google as we have one virtual device here we can see the virtual device is selected by default if we want to create any other virtual device we can just go again to the device manager and create one okay now the moment of truth what we all are waiting for let's run our application on our virtual device to run the project we need to click on this green button run app and let's click it and we can notice that we have this gradle build running okay at the bottom you will see this we can click on this and then it will show us inside one alert dialog that gradle build is running we need to wait few seconds until unless our project compiles and yeah our project is launched our first application is installed inside our virtual phone we can minimize this and this is the button panel for our virtual device so if you want to turn off your phone like you want to switch off you can just click on this okay to turn back on you can click this again if you want to increase or reduce the volume for maybe any ringtone or maybe any notifications which we will cover later we can control the volume from here we can rotate our phone as well like this like this if you want to press the back button this is the back button if we will click here it will behave like we are clicking the back button inside our phone let's click this our application is closed we can press the home button as well we can just click on this button as well to see what is there in the back stack okay our application is there in the back stack we can clear this like this okay we can again go back and check in the app panel that our application is there our application name is hello world app and this is present inside our application panel to launch our application we can click on this okay our application is launched and then one very important thing is this window log cat okay all of the logging all of the print statement which we use or any other kind of logs which we print inside our code base will be printed inside this window log cat window okay and this is the device name from which these logs are printing okay and this by default is added by android studio this is package mine means the application package 
which is com dot native mobile bits dot hello world app okay and how we can check what is the package of our application we know we gave this package but how we can find out in the code so we can go to this file build dot gradle module app we can click on this we can go to the top and here it is showing us the application id okay this is unique for every android application i will repeat again this will be unique for every android application in google play store okay so this is the package name for our application and this is the same thing here and this is by default selected by android studio let me add one change quickly so this is the text which is showing up right now so let's add our youtube channel name native mobile bits and let's increase the size also a little bit let's make it 25 sp and let's add one print ln statement as well here okay this is one log we added don't worry about these things i will teach you everything in detail for now let's run the application okay let's go to the log cat window and let's see if our log is printing or not simplest thing is let's just copy this and let's open our locket window and click here and just press command f and type the text we can see that it is printing in the locket if we remove the search as well we can see it's printing in the logs okay and it is showing us the respective package as well this is very simple example of how we can use logcat in the next videos i am going to show you everything about it don't worry at all for now we go to know that what is the functionality of the logcat window and we have installed our application as well in our first ever created virtual device we can launch our application let me show you one very beautiful functionality of android studio not many people use this but this is very helpful we can see that we have one project window then one coding window then our emulator window okay right now there are three windows open but if you want to only code and you don't want to run anything first you want to focus on writing the logic so you can extend this view so by default you can hide this window i know but for now let's see the advanced version you can click on this view button you can click on this appearance okay and you can click on this enter zen mode and only coding part will be open this looks beautiful okay you can do anything here you can just write code and then you can focus on this code only on this code and later on you can exit this zen mode by clicking on this exit zen mode okay and you can also click on this presentation mode and that time also it will look something like this it's similar kind of thing but it is very helpful right we can click on this and we can enter full screen mode as well like this and then we will have plenty of space that's it for this android studio essential training i hope now you are more familiar with android studio and now you will be very easily able to use android studio and from next video onwards i am going to teach you everything about android and we will build beautiful applications together and let me tell you it took me a lot of effort to make this video i hope you like this video and if you find this video helpful please subscribe to my channel and please share this video with your friends who are learning android